Hi, and welcome back to Roy on Rescue. I had a person call, uh, basically email in a really valid question. Their question was in regards to traumatic asphyxiation. Now, this person happened to be an EMT student. I believe they're at a specialist or an intermediate level, and they were doing some of their own research and couldn't really come up with a lot about traumatic asphyxiation, what the signs and symptoms were, how to react to a traumatic asphyxiation. Um, and so I'm going to try to shed a little bit of light on this. So I hope this helps. A traumatic asphyxiation is really when you have something that actually presses down on the person's thoracic cavity. In other words, um, the, the primary things that do this would be like a tractor. As you see this a lot in industrial accidents where some type of mechanical device comes down on a person's chest, crushes the chest, not necessarily rupturing things inside, though it can, um, but it tends to flatten the lungs and causes a ton of inner thoracic pressure. That's why you tend to see this red blue line from like wherever the, the object is at up. <clears throat> you see a lot of broken blood vessels in the face. You tend to see a bloodshot eyes, maybe bloody eyes. If they look kind of look like bloody eyes, they broke the, the um, vessels in the eyeballs because of all the intracranial pressure. Um, but in, in this whole thing, really what's going on is that um, they are A, having a ton of pressure on their whole thoracic cavity, causing a ton of pressure that their heart has to beat against. It's very difficult to do that, so it's almost like causing an external extreme hypertension. The second piece of that is, is that they tend not to be able to breathe very well. So if they can't actually get the air in, it's like having something sitting on your chest, you're also starving of oxygen. And so you've got this double fold thing going on. You've got blood circulation being impeded and you also have a, a hard time getting uh, oxygen into your body. If this goes too long, obviously the person is probably going to die. When we see this, you're gonna treat the patient very much like someone who was choked to death or drowned, they did not get a lot of oxygen in. It wasn't necessarily that they had a heart attack. It isn't necessarily that they had something internal happen because of a de disease process. Maybe they're normally a fairly healthy person, but they had an external force going against them, stopping them from circulating oxygenated blood. This puts them into a shock syndrome because of non-circulating oxygen. Okay, so along with that though, the EMS responder or the non-trained responder also has to be thinking internal injuries, obviously crushing injuries. Uh, in some cases, they may have a ruptured aorta, ruptured valves. They may have um, inner thoracic uh, fractures of the ribs that are poking into lungs. So they may have like a tension pneumo, uh, tension hemothorax going on, which is blood or air filling in the lung area. Um, Remember those of you that are in EMS, um, late stage we'll see tracheal deviation, early stage not so much. You'll probably see a lot of JVD, jugular vein distension because of all the back pressure. Again, we normally see this in, um, in other conditions, but this is a mechanical trauma. So you're going to initiate all of the same things when you first show up on scene. You're gonna check for scene safety, whatever is on their chest you don't want coming onto your chest. You're gonna check them for first levels of consciousness. Are they aware of what's going on? Are they unresponsive? Activation of emergency medical services. And the big thing here is make sure you let 911 know what's going on because they're gonna to have to send out the proper equipment to get this thing off this person. Whether it's a car, whether it's a tire, whether it's a tractor, whether it's a piece of machinery, a wall, a cave-in, who cares what it is? It could be an elephant for all I care at a zoo. We gotta get this thing off this person if we wanna to try to revive them. So um, letting 911 know that is going to help them to initiate the right rescue equipment with the emergency responders so that we can get this device off. Uh, this is especially important during in volunteer areas. You see that a lot in the agriculture uh, uh, industry where maybe it's out rural and they're depending on a volunteer system that doesn't have a lot of equipment sometimes. A lot of times they do. They've got all the equipment they need, but they're, uh, they're counting on volunteers that are coming from all over that geographical area. And they may not be coming with the jaws of life. They may not be coming with the airbag jacks or the things that they're going to need to get that thing off the person's chest. Makeshift improvision is you, if you have a trailer jack, if you've got some device, you know, the big thing though is that we've got to be able to cribbage that thing so that if those jacks fail, if it gets teeter-tottery, it doesn't come crushing back down on you or the patient. 
So, you know, really be careful if you're going to try to do some kind of extrication yourself. But obviously, that would be a great idea if the jack has come loose, get it back underneath there and jack it back up off the person and get that person out so that you can do an assessment, activation EMS, have somebody else activate EMS, and then start maintaining, um, you know, opening the airway, making sure that this person is moving that they are breathing, that they have a pulse, that there's no external bleeding, and then if they're not responsive, they're not breathing, you're gonna start CPR and continue CPR until help arrives. Only if you're a professional rescuer are we gonna check for pulses in between. So this isn't about CPR, this is about um, traumatic asphyxiation. I hope this helped. It's more common than people realize, especially in backyard mechanics, as well as agricultural and industrial circles. Something to be aware of, get a game plan, think about what you're gonna do if something like this happens. Plan for the worst, hope for the best, and on the other side, we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining me on Boy and Rescue. Have a great day.